On our last research dive in the San Juan Islands, we found a lost fishing net. These plastic ghost nets will continue to fish year after year and kill all types of wildlife. But today we're here with the professionals from the Northwest Straits Foundation to remove this net. Let's go nab ourselves a ghost. Seafood helps feed the world. We love sustainable seafood, but in the process of catching it, it's estimated that more than 30,000 square miles of fishing nets and 25 million traps are lost or abandoned in our oceans every year. This derelict ghost gear kills countless animals and is a major source of plastic pollution. It's a global problem, and we're not immune to it in the Salish Sea. Fortunately, we have folks around here like super diver Creighton Finn. Creighton's company specializes in doing sonar surveys so precise that they can pinpoint targets as thin as monofilament nets and as small as crab traps. Creighton has been busting these ghosts since the 1980s. This is definitely not sport diving. It's difficult and dangerous work in cold water and strong currents. Nets are one of a diver's mortal enemies. Entanglement is an ever-present risk. Creighton carries three knives and has an unlimited supply of air piped down from a compressor. He's in constant communication with his boat crew 50 feet above us. And just in case there's a problem, a safety diver is all rigged up and ready to jump in at a moment's notice. During the 20 plus years of Northwest Straits derelict gear removal program, They've worked on much larger nets than this one, but even a fragment of gill net is still a nightmare for wildlife. While Creighton works up a sweat, we survey the damage. They're called ghosts, but lost nets and traps are really more like zombies. Their intended life is over, but they linger on as senseless, mindless killers. And just like zombies, they're practically immortal. Synthetic nets last hundreds of years in salt water without disintegrating, and they continue to massacre more animals every day they remain on the bottom. Judging from the level of growth on it, this ghost has been haunting Eagle Point's rocky reef for about three years, but the fresh remains of lingcod, rockfish, and a seabird are evidence that it has claimed its latest victims just within the last 48 hours. Gill nets are used in the Salish Sea to target salmon, the nets do their job very well. But when they're lost, usually by getting snagged on rocks, they begin to kill indiscriminately. Fish that live on or near the bottom are especially vulnerable. It's a real concern for our rockfish populations, which include two kinds that are on the endangered species list. Lingcod and their cousins, the kelp greenlings, are also frequently lost to ghost nets. Lingcod are fearlessly territorial fish that don't back down from anything. During breeding season, male lingcod stake out their man caves and invite over nice ladyfish. The male then defends their fertilized eggs until the babies hatch around two months later. But if he gets caught in a net during that time, the half million eggs he was protecting will be gobbled up by predators within a couple of days. A most graphic find in this underwater house of horrors is a freshly killed cormorant. Nets are lethal to all kinds of marine birds, like cormorants, our declining population of western grebes, and the favorites of anyone who's ever heard their haunting call. The loons. These birds make their living by snorkeling at the surface until they spot a likely lunch. They have no way of knowing that the tasty fish or crab they're chasing might be there because they were attracted to the plants and animals growing on a ghost net. The smaller prey darts between the mesh to escape, but the bird is caught and drowns. The same thing happens to marine mammals like seals and porpoises, whose simple quest for food becomes fatal. To compound the tragedy, once an animal gets captured by a ghost net, it serves as bait to catch more and more wildlife. They take a particularly heavy toll on crabs, including red rocks and our world-famous Dungeness. These benthic bulldozers are the ocean's cleanup crew, efficiently recycling dead animals. 
Like this dungeness, nom nomming on the carcass of a plain fin nom, midship. Nom, 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 nom. A fish trapped in a net may look like a free lunch to the crab, but if their pointy nom, nom, shell or claws nom, get nom, tangled, nom, nom, nom. it'll be their last meal. It's definitely not cheap to find and retrieve derelict gear, but thanks to our prized crabs, this is a conservation project where we can actually put a dollar figure on the benefits. When Sea Dock and Northwest Straits calculated the value of just the Dungeness crabs killed and wasted, it added up to $2,000 per net per year. That equals a 50% annual return on the one-time investment made to find and remove each net. And it pays out over and over again, every year, for the decades the ghost would have kept on killing. The long-term positive impact of this program is immense. And that's only counting a single species. It doesn't include the bottom line benefit to the sport fishing industry for all the lingcod and greenling saved, or the incalculable worth of removing the risk of drowning for divers and swimmers, or the huge value of the 870 acres of habitat this project has restored, where everything from busy barnacles to our gorgeous gargoyles, the buffalo sculpins, can flourish without the constant specter of entanglement hanging over their heads. Fishers don't lose their nets on purpose. They make their living with this gear. So the program in Puget Sound offers a number where those who lost it, or anyone else, can report a net's position. Northwest Straits Foundation will send out a team to recover it. No fault, no fuss, no fines for the fisher folks. Evicting these malevolent spirits is not a delicate operation. They don't peacefully go towards the light, the light. In the sailors see 48 different kinds of fish, 18 types of birds, four sorts of mammals, and 171 species of invertebrates have been recorded caught in ghost nets. And they're determined to take as many lives with them as they can. The final casualties are the world's largest species of barnacles the giant acorns. Many people think that barnacles are just really lazy seashells, but they're actually crustaceans related to the shrimps and crabs. Barnacles produce a glycoprotein glue to cement themselves to hard structure and then use their modified feather feet to sweep the water for food. The problem for them is that they can only stick onto something once. There's no way to pull the net off the reef without uprooting some of these big, beautiful barnacles. Any other animals that come up with the net and are still alive will be rescued by the boat crew and returned to the water. This gill net is number 5,876, recovered just from the Washington State side of the Salish Sea. If all these nets hadn't been removed, it's estimated they'd be killing 12 million animals every year. That is one more go busted. Hey, it's not just commercial fishers who lose gear. Recreational crabbers in Puget Sound lose an estimated 12,000 traps each and every year. These ghost traps annually kill and waste some 180,000 legal sized crabs, which works out to something like three quarters of a million delicious crab cakes. Thankfully, there are some easy tips to ensure you don't lose your expensive traps and become part of the ghost gear problem. The key to successful crabbing is rigging your trap correctly before you even get near the water. Add weight before bait. It may take a little bit longer to pull up, but a properly weighted pot will not drift. And a pot that drifts is not gonna catch crab and it may take it out into a ferry channel or another place where it could get lost. Also, be sure to use that leaded line so it sinks. Whoa, mother load, look at this. Oh, yes. Yep. So what we've done with ours is we've added just a little bit of rebar to the bottom of the pot here, and it adds enough weight that the pot goes down easily and it doesn't shift during tidal exchanges. Make sure to use enough sinking line to account for the rising tide. Add an extra float or two in addition to the required red and white. This will make it easier to spot yours, even during crowded summer weekends. Another factor in losing traps is time. The longer they're left unattended, the higher the odds that they'll get swept away by strong tides, rafts of seaweed, 
are the propellers of passing boats. In our tests, crabs detected the bait and entered the traps very quickly. We reached maximum crabby capacity within just 45 to 60 minutes. So you'll catch your limit of crabs faster and have less chance of losing your gear if you check your traps every hour or two instead of leaving them soak all day. Dungeness crab populations are healthy and these are delicious eating. So please go out and enjoy the fishing. But be sure you rig your pots appropriately because you don't want to be part of the problem. Rig your pots right!